Believe it or not, a very common misconception with snakes is that they all lay eggs, when in actuality, only about 70% of them lay eggs, and the remaining 30% of snake species either give live birth or appear to give live birth. So that's why today I'm going to be sharing with you the three different methods of reproduction when it comes to snakes. Let's start with egg-laying species, since we're all pretty familiar with those. Snakes that lay eggs are considered oviparous. Ovum meaning egg in Latin, so oviparous means egg-laying method of reproduction. These snakes will develop eggs inside of their bodies, and then those eggs will of course be laid in a, an entire clutch at once, not just one at a time. And then those eggs will need to be incubated at the proper temperature and humidity levels for varying amounts of time depending on the species. And when the babies are fully developed, they emerge from the eggs. And then those are your hatchling or neonate snakes. Some examples of oviparous snakes include uh, pythons, which are, you know, the snakes that love dessert the most, as well as nearly all species of colubrids, including things like bull snakes, uh, hognose snakes, false water cobras, and many more. The second method of reproduction would be snakes that are considered viviparous, or live-bearing snakes. Since the word ovi isn't in this term at all, that indicates that there are no eggs in any stage of development. So instead, viviparous snakes will nourish their young inside of their own bodies via a placenta. And when the babies are fully developed, then the snake gives birth to them. Those babies would be considered neonates, uh, not necessarily hatchlings because the, they haven't technically hatched. Basically, all hatchlings are neonates, but not all neonates are hatchlings, if that makes sense. Some examples of viviparous or live-bearing snakes include boa constrictors, as well as uh, garter snakes and water snakes. The last type of reproduction is kind of a combination between egg-laying snakes and live-bearing snakes, and it's also the most difficult one to pronounce and spell. These would be snakes that are considered ovoviviparous. And these snakes, which by the way, bull snakes are oviparous, they're egg layers, they're not ovoviviparous. Uh, I just have him out here because I don't have an example of an ovoviviparous snake, which we'll get to later. There's very few of them. Anyway, ovoviviparous snakes, since it has ovo in it, that tells you that there are eggs involved at one point. Basically, snakes that fall into this category will develop eggs inside of their bodies, but they don't lay them. Instead, they will incubate those eggs within their bodies, which allows the snake to be able to move itself and therefore its entire clutch of eggs to an environment that provides the proper temperature for those eggs to incubate at. And once those babies are fully developed, they will hatch from their eggs within the mother, and then the mother soon afterwards will give birth to those babies. So it appears as though the snake gives live birth, but there are eggs involved. The eggs are just retained inside of the mother, and from what I understand, they're reabsorbed. There are not many species of ovoviviparous snakes, however. Uh, really the main example would be rattlesnakes, and I don't have rattlesnakes, so that's why I'm just carrying my bull snake, which does rattle his tail like a rattlesnake, but these again are oviparous, not ovoviviparous. If you want to see an example of an ovoviviparous snake, uh, we actually saw one in the wild. We found a timber rattlesnake that you can watch in this video right here. And if you want to check out this snake, it was a beautiful timber rattlesnake. Uh, I'll link to this at the end of this video in the credits. Now that we've covered the main three reproductive strategies with snakes, which category does your snake fall under? We're curious. Let us know in the comments below. And if you don't have a snake, these terms also apply to all other animals as well. So let us know which of those three categories, oviparous, viviparous, and ovoviviparous, your animal at home falls under. Thanks for learning something new with me today, and we'll see you next time. Pythons, which are, you know, the snakes that love dessert the most. <laughs> you know you like it. <laughs> it. Took me a minute there. Okay. <laughs> and if you want to check out this snake, it was a beautiful timber. <laughs> Basically, snakes that fall under this category. Really? <laughs> Good morning. He wanted to be on camera. I guess. <laughs>